Hello, welcome to the program, a season of expectancy coming live to you from Duarte here in California and with your host, Reverend Ekwia Osewonsu. I'm honored to have Pastor Ennis Whitman on my program tonight for the second time. And before we start the program, I want, I want us to pray and commit the program to, uh, to the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you for this moment. Father, I pray that let your spirit take absolute control over this program. Mm -hmm. That at the end of it, we will see that Father is fruitful, that is productive in the lives of many people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, before we go on with the program, I want us to listen to a song, 10,000 Raising. And Andrew and Christopher are going to lead us with a worship. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like now.
Thank you, Andrew and Christopher. Yes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. It's very important that we, we have to be grateful and thankful to God for every day, every minute, every second, every hour. Well, Pastor Ernest Whitmer was on, a, on the program two weeks ago. So in case you, may, you missed the first part, you can get a program on YouTube or you can go to the website atvsat.com and then you can get it from the archives and you'll be really blessed. So um, Pastor Ernest was on the program last two weeks and we shared about the grace of God in times of grieving. And because of the time, uh, we are not going back to what we did. We did say last, uh, last two weeks, but I just, you know, give it, just recap it very short. He lost his wife to a car accident, tra tragic car accident, four days before his son's wedding. And the funeral was Friday and the wedding was on Saturday. So he shared a little bit about how God brought him and his family through all these um, tragedies or through all these um, stories. So we are going to continue with, with the second part of it. And Pastor, welcome. Thank you, Queer. Good to be here. Yeah. I remember the other time you said something. You said that there's an altar of praise, an altar of lamentation. Mm -hmm. And you didn't get time, you know, to share more about that. Can you share briefly what you mean by that? Certainly. Thank you, Akuya. And uh, you're right. Uh, there's not only an altar of praise that we as Christians can worship God at, but there's an altar of lamentation as well because God is the orchestrator of everything that happens mm -hmm. in our life. There are no accidents. Mm -hmm. We call it an accident where my wife was killed, uh, but it really wasn't an accident. It was God's divine um, arrangement, and, and he, he saw it coming. He, he was perfectly aware of what was going on, mm -hmm. and um, so it really wasn't an accident. It was a good thing in his, in his mind. And, uh, you know, life comes at us with, with what we call good things, positive things. It's easy to lift our hands and praise and worship to the Lord and just thank Him for the good things that it feels good to us, it seems good to us. But the same God, the same God that's in control over your life and over my life, sometimes allows things that we would rather define as negative but they really are a place, an altar, where we can just fall in worship, weeping before the altar. It's not like we deny pain. There's nothing wrong with embracing the pain. We need to be real. We need to be honest about what's happening in our lives. Uh, and we just simply embrace it as a part of our worship. We may be weeping, crying, uh, bending over the altar, perhaps, rather than lifting our hands in praise and looking heavenward. We may be just crying and weeping and sobbing and just wondering uh, what's going on. Uh, someone has said that the uh, suffering is the most hallowed place of our Heavenly Father's presence. It's like, a, it's like a sacred place that God arranges and He gives us this piece of suffering and, and, and he, he does not just abandon us and let us there, but He is there with us. It's a hallowed, sacred place of worship and he's there and it's kind of like a birthing room you know uh, those of us who are parents have been in birthing rooms when they give birth to uh, my wife Rachel gave birth to five children and I was there every time and it's a hallowed place it's a sacred place but it's a place of suffering much suffering and it's a place where Christ is both formed in us and born from us as we allow him to enter into that place of suffering. And he just does his perfect work in us and shapes new things in our lives and, and perfects our testimony, purifies our heart. And then out of that forming within us, we give birth to new life and new opportunities and new energy for him. Uh, 
the Apostle Paul said, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. So these, what we call accidents, are actually hallowed places, birthing rooms of new opportunity and new life. We can worship at this altar. Okay, okay. thank you for um, your answer. And I've got a question. Do you know, I know that the Bible, Hebrews 9.27, says it's appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. So we all know that death is inevitable. How would you advise somebody who is going through similar situation or somebody since, you know, we all die, maybe somebody is watching now, maybe in a couple of months later, somebody may be in the same situation. I mean, God forbid it. I'm just, you know, saying, but since Hebrews 9, 27, we all die. Amen. You see, so yeah. how do you advise or encourage, you know, how, what the person should do and what the person should avoid? Mm -hmm. Because from your own experience, I believe there might be something that you've done that you've regretted during this period. Mm -hmm. And there might be some things that you've done that um, really help you. Mm -hmm. So can you look into the camera and uh, thank you. You're right, 10 out of 10 die. Uh, we're all appointed to die at some point in, in our lifetime, and it's the, end of, it's the end of the road. We're all on a dead-end street, and uh, our lives end in death. It's appointed that a man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. And so, yeah, we need to be ready, and as far as being ready for uh, incidents like car accidents that mm -hmm. cause our death uh, or cause us to go through grieving, um, the way we get ready for those times is to invite God into our lives. We just align our hearts with Him mm -hmm. because God is the creator of everything. He's the orchestrator and He designs these things and so we just keep saying yes to God. That's what confession means, to say the same thing. He says, Ernest, you're a sinner. You need a Savior. And I say, yes, God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I say, yes, you are the way. And so I, I align my heart with you. Please come into my life. Change me. Make me what you want me to be. Just take charge of this birthing room of my life so that whatever happens, I will have you, God, in my life. And then when he designs uh, even, even good things so that we don't abuse the good opportunities, uh, we take advantage of them and use them for his glory. And, and the negative things that happen, we, we embrace them and we say, God, here, here I am. You are with me. You, I have your spirit in my life. Your grace is flowing because my, my channels are free and flowing with, with your love and grace. I'm ready. You know, those in, in the week of that accident, uh, four days before uh, my son's wedding, um, there was no way that we could have handled those circumstances without the grace of God. And so we were ready. Not that we were proud or arrogant and say, oh yeah, bring it on. No, no, it was, it, was, it was a tragedy in our lives. But because we had opened up our lives, not only me, but my wife, our children had opened our lives to him so that when tragedy struck, God's grace could be given to us. You said something, and, and I know it's a key word, surrender. So we'll be, we'll be, I want us to um, have a break. We'll be having a worship song. But before then, I, before we listen to the song, I want you to share a little bit about your book, because I know you are writing a book. Can you share a little bit about your book and how people can contact you? And then after that, we'll listen to the song. Thank you, Akuya. Yes, I'm writing a book about Rachel. Uh, she was a beautiful uh, woman of God. She was my bride, and uh, she was a picture of the bride of Christ, and, which is the church. And if you're a believer, you're a part of that bride, and you are beautiful in God's eyes, and, and he wants you to be a demonstration to everyone of, of the kind of relationship that he wants to have as, as the bridegroom 
with us, the bride. And Rachel was a beautiful picture of that. And so I take uh, 17 um, episodes or phases of her life and just talk about them. And, and then I, it, it culminates in each chapter as a direct challenge to the church to be the beautiful bride of Christ. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I, I know surrender is, 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 is a word that a lot of people don't want to hear because it's just like you're a prisoner of war. But we can't, we can't say, Lord, Lord, and Master, you know, and do our own will, which means we don't, we don't honor him. That's why Jesus said in the scripture, in the gospel, he said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't obey me? If you love me, you keep my commandment. It's just as simple as that. I know it's not easy sometimes to give our will and take God's will, but guess what? His will is always the best. So we're going to listen to a song. Um, Dustin and Teresa are going to give us a song. So please, don't wait. wait don't don't turn, Don't flip the, the the channel, or you know, don't go out. Just wait for the song. It's very important.
Thank you, Dustin and Theresa. Yeah, Pastor, uh, I think we're running out of time. I have a very important question that I want to ask. And is I remember you said um, you used to go to the cemetery. I'm not trying to put you on spot, but you, you used to go to the cemetery every week. You know, were you able to share your struggles or are you able to share your struggles with the people around you, your children your, or the people around you? And also, is it good to do that, to share? If you are able to share your is it good? Yeah. Yes, it is. It certainly is good to, to share our struggles with others. Uh, certainly as a family, we did that a lot. Uh, I have several men of God in my life that I've talked to a lot. And, you know, if, you're, if you've experienced tragedy, uh, do that. Talk to someone, talk to a pastor, talk to a friend, someone that you can trust. And uh, just be real about your struggle and have them pray with you and you pray with them. And God can handle anything. It, we need to be real. You know, I haven't always lived that surrender that uh, Gina just sang about. There have been times when I've, I've tried to fix my pain and tried to compensate in, in ways that were not healthy. And um, God just wants us to embrace the pain, surrender to Him, talk to others, be real. And it's so helpful to be able to do that. Amen. Thank you for that. See, I want to encourage you, maybe if you, are, you may be watching right now, and you are going through struggles because maybe you are grieving. You know, there, there are people, good people around. I know sometimes people don't want to share their struggles or their problems with people because they, they, maybe they share it, you know, even Christians, and they have they are been betrayed. And because of that, they don't want to share any thing that they are going to. They don't want to um, share their concerns with people. But I want to encourage you, don't keep it by yourself. You can't do that. We need, we need one another because we are one body, just as Paul said, and we need each part need, needs the other part. We all have to you know, carry our brother's burden and pray about it. And God, I know God will show you the right person to share your struggles with so that the person can pray with you or pray for you and intercede is very important. I, I pray for a lot of people and people too. Sometimes I call people, you know, to pray for me. So we need one another. We, we need, we, we, are, we are just, we can't do it on our own. So pastor, can you pray right now for people who don't have relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because maybe somebody is watching right now. Maybe this is the last night. Can you pray for those people yes, yes. to give their, to, so that they will, um, you know, hearken their, their ears into, into the voice of God, you know. And God says, if you hear my voice, don't, don't harden your heart so that they will accept the Lord Jesus Christ because hell is real, heaven is real. Amen. You can't be perfect. You can't fix your life, right? My sister, my brother, time is running out. Jesus is coming soon. So it's time. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you pray for those yes, people? So yes, yeah, so if, if, if you need to get right with God, now is the time. Just pray with me. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come right now and penetrate the heart and minds of anyone out there who's listening who does not have that relationship with you, that open communication. Just come down and touch their spirits and trigger a response of faith to you and just help them to cry out to you in acknowledgement of who you are and that you can, you can penetrate their lives, you can pour your grace and love into their lives. And just help them to lift their hands and surrender repentance of their sin and turn to you as the only way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you pray that prayer, my address information will be on the screen. Write to me. Or if, if, or if you, you didn't get that information, you can write to this network. The, the information is running on the screen. If you need any prayers, please call this studio and we'll pray for you or call me. My phone number is on. And Pastor, can you give your information yes, very yes, fast? Yes, feel free to call me. My number is 323-333-2000. 323-333-2000.
888-222-2279. Call me any time of the day or night. I think we have about two or three minutes. I want to pray very f for a few seconds for, for God to touch and heal people who are wounded. Father, I thank you that you are the God, our healer. And Father, your word doesn't return void but it accomplishes and achieves the purpose for which you sent it. So, Father, I pray right now, since you are omnipresent, you are omnipotent, Father, those who have been hurt, those who are, who are desperate, Father God, who need healing, emotional healing, even physical healing, mental healing, Father, I pray that you touch them and heal them, restore them in the name of Jesus, bring the right people to their lives so that they will be able to help them to come out of grief because your grace is about and sort of for them to go through that. They don't have to commit suicide. They don't, they don't want to um, isolate themselves. But they should know that you are God who, who loves them. Even before you, the world was created, you have already called them as your sons and daughters. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Now we come to the end of the program. Andrew and Christopher, will you give us the last song and the, so that we end the program? And thank you very much for watching the program. See how much you paid to bring.